Hey everyone, I'm Jessica Kramer for MRC TV. Remember how the media so conveniently glossed over the Hunter Biden scandal? Well, two filmmakers, not afraid of covering tough subjects, are making a movie about it called My Son Hunter. Anne McElhenney and Phelan McAleer are with us today. Thank you guys so much for joining. It's great to be here. Thanks so much, Jessica. Thanks. Yes. Um, so now you two are no strangers to controversy. In 2018, you released the film Gosnell about the horrific abortion practices of Philadelphia abortionist Kermit Gosnell. What did you learn from that experience and did it play a role in your decision to make this film? Well, we learned that there's a real appetite for the truth. And if you offer people the truth, they will they will pay for it. They will go and see it. They will make it happen. And, you know, we sat around for a long time thinking, wow, somebody's going to make a movie. Out of it. We, you know, we'd only made documentaries before. Somebody's going to make a movie out of the Gosnell story. It's got it all. It's got, it's got murder. It's got true crime. It's got drama. It's got political drama. It's got media malpractice. It's got hero detectives. Uh, it's got a, a serial killer. It's all the things that all the good things that Americans like. Uh, and uh, then uh, nobody did it. So we looked at it ourselves and said, like, well, that's all, if not who, if not somebody who, but us, you know. And uh, so we did it. So, you know. And people responded very well. I mean, that's right, Salem Singh there, because, you know, we were like these two, as you, you know, we were talking about our names and how to pronounce them at the beginning. We're two Irish immigrants. I mean, we're, we're basically a typical example of immigrants doing jobs Americans just won't do. You know, so here we are. Here we are. You know, here's this story. And what was interesting was, as I say, two immigrants, you know, we went and we did a crowdfunding campaign. We sat like this with our other colleague, Magda, who's from Poland, and said, you know, will you send us money? Because we want to make a movie about this doctor, Dr. Kermit Gosnell. And, you know, 30,000 people responded. We raised $2.3 million from the public who said, you know, they weren't happy with the fact that this thing had been censored, that this story was significant, was really important. And, and they were willing to pay for it with a proof of co and they And they trusted us. And we're hoping that the same thing happens again. It's very similar. In some ways, this Hunter Biden movie is going to be very similar in, in quite a few ways yeah. to what we did with Gosnell. Because in the very same way with Gosnell, where this shocking story was completely suppressed, here we have it again. What happened when the laptop was discovered of the, the son of the presidential candidate at that point, this, the front running presidential um, candidate, you had, you had this guy, this laptop appears, there's talk about the big guy, there's talk about a, a, a son who has a drug problem, who suddenly has been chosen to be on the board of an energy company in Ukraine and be paid $50,000 a month. I mean, are you kidding me? You know, and, and that's not a story, and they decide not to cover that. But not and only not to cover it, they suppressed it. Like, I mean, like that's, Twitter, like big, you're Twitter, about big, big, tech. big tech. But the media also attacked other journalists for covering this story. They didn't do, they, interestingly, they didn't try and debunk the story, which is what a journalist should do if you, don't, if you think it's not true. They didn't write to other people in these email chains saying, is this you, did you send or receive this email? Uh, they didn't do that because they didn't like the answer. So people know they're being fed a, a load of nonsense. People know they're be, the truth has been suppressed, and that's why they've responded so quickly and so well to our crowdfunding campaign. Yeah, we just started the crowdfunding campaign on Tuesday um, of this week, and we've raised over 10% of the money already. We've oh, raised no, more, it's now over 300,000. Oh, that's great, okay, yeah. even better. <laughs> then I thought that's great. It keeps coming in. It keeps coming in, and people are really great, and people do respond, because people are very frustrated by what's happened, and people do want the media to be exposed, as well as the Biden family corruption. Yeah, I mean, obviously you guys already touched on it. This is a big missed story, and one that we did a study on here at the Media Research Center. According to our findings, 36% of Biden voters did not know about this story. 13% of them, or 4.6 of total Biden voters, would not have voted for him had they known about this story. That's a huge margin, wide enough to have swung the election. What do you guys hope that this film is gonna do now that President Biden is already in office? And by the way, can we just mention, by the way, that one of the main reasons we're doing this film is because of that me Media Research Center um, oh, data and yeah. that polling that really uh, pu pushed us over the edge and made us realize yeah. how significant the suppression was. So we're very grateful to the MRC I, for doing that work. I suppose, you know, what do we hope this achieves? You know, actually, we're, we're journalists. And so, we, you know, we're not looking for a political outcome here. We're looking for uh, the truth to be out there and the politics to decide itself. But you can't have a political, uh, you can't have a political outcome based on a lie. You can't have a, tr a truthful outcome based on a lie. So we just want the facts out there. And the movie is a, is a great way of getting it out there. It's very accessible, very entertaining. Hunter Biden's life uh, 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 story and his, his 
business life story. It's a joke. It's a, it's a laugh. It's entertaining. But there's a serious story to it. Like this is a guy who got a waiver to get into the Navy uh, late in life arrived on his first day and was tested for drugs and ate more cocaine in the system than the population of Bogota. And uh, he, you know, his, his response was actually what happened was on the way I was driving here and I stopped off in a bar for a cigarette. I went out on the terrace. I didn't realize I didn't have a cigarette. Two South Africans gave me a cigarette. It must have been laced with cocaine. And like that doesn't... What shower, what, what, you know, as they say in Ireland, you know, you don't think I came down in the last shower. Who in their right mind would find that a plausible story? You know, like, I don't know much about cocaine, but I don't think that uh, I don't think they're giving it away for free. I think that's something I know about it because I think it's very hard to get it in the first place. So I think that if you had it, I don't think you're giving away free samples to a stranger, to a random stranger. So this was a you know a bogus story, and it's only the beginning. Like you know, obviously this guy has an and has an addiction problem, and we're very sympathetic to that. By the way, we're from Ireland. We exported alcoholism around the world, so we can't. We're not in a position to to be to be high minded about that. Yes. But here is a guy with a serious addiction problem. He goes to rehab as he walks into the rehab you know and I mean your audience are going to enjoy this one like he's walking into the rehab and he meets bicycles a homeless woman called bicycles because she always has a bicycle with her and instead of going to the rehab as many grown-up adults would do in a situation like his he decides to go and live with bicycles and you're meant to believe that the board of Burisma after doing an executive search around the planet earth found only this guy was the guy they needed to have on their board, the guy who lived with bicycles for many months, the guy who got a stripper pregnant and denied paternity, the guy who, as Phelan said, went to the Navy for one day and got rejected. You know, these stories need to be widely known because when you hear them, you know, there's a part of you that says, there's no way this is true. And, that, and, and that's a kind of a legitimate reaction because you know what? You haven't heard it before. People don't know this story and they, de they need to know it because... It certainly brings up, you know, we're, as I said, we're, we're not, you're, you know, your audience, we're not stupid. There's a reason why he got an $83,000 diamond ring from a Chinese businessman. There's a reason why the mayor of Moscow's wife gave him $3 million. There's a reason why his family got $100,000 from other Chinese people to go on a shopping spree. And we know the reason, you know, so inherently, I'm sure he's a, fine fellow or a nice fellow or whatever but intrinsically we all know the value he has to the russians to the ukrainians and to the chinese yeah and you guys already touched on a little bit of this but not only was this the story not covered by the mainstream media it was also a target of big tech with facebook and twitter not allowing people to share the story the original new york post story do you do you anticipate social media censorship of this film yeah i mean in some ways, we're, 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 we know what we expect it, and we think people will rise above it. People will get around it. I mean, you know, we're, that's why we're crowdfunding, and we're crowdfunding through our own site, not through Indiegogo, because when we crowdfunded for Gosnell, um, we tried to go on Kickstarter. They kicked us off. They wouldn't let us go there, and, you know, because we were going to use the word murdered. And I'm going, he's in prison for murder. You know, that's what he did. So, you know, the truth, the truth is not a defense on big tech. Uh, so that's why we're doing it independently. Hollywood won't make this movie. And people have really stepped up uh, at mysonhunter.com. They really have. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing really well. We need all the help we can get now. Yes, yeah, so the site is called mysonhunter.com. It's, it's very simple to remember, mysonhunter.com. And people are turning up. People are, I mean, it's really gratifying and it's beautiful. It's kind of beautiful because people from all over the country and then people are writing the most lovely notes to us and thanking us for doing this work that's so essential. Um, I mean, we're very much, uh, you know, in your debt, actually, by the way, at the MRC. You guys are our friends and you guys, you know, have through doing the work that you did in the polling, exposing exactly what would have happened. That would have, it would have totally, you know, people talk about in foreign interference with the elections. There's all this talk about foreign interference with the elections and maybe the stuff about the Dominion voting machines. What we know for sure, what we know for sure is there was interference in the election. And that interference was by, was by journalists and by big tech suppressing a news story that people needed to hear in advance of voting. We know that that happened. You've proved that that happened. You know, we can see that that happened. What happened with Twitter suppressing the New York Post? This is unprecedented. This is Stalinesque. This is the kind of stuff you expect in China, in Russia. You don't expect this in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Now, I know that you guys want to keep a lot secret and under wraps because you are going to be releasing this film, but is there anything that you can tell our viewers who don't know about this story or do know about this story? Is there anything in here that we should be expecting? 
Ooh. Well, we're going to film it in Serbia. Yeah. Right. Uh, because it'll double as a Ukraine. Uh, we can also it, it's cheap to film there. Also, I believe there are a number of attractive women and strip bars in Eastern Europe. Um, uh, and no film would be uh, complete. No Hunter no, Biden. No Hunter Biden film would be complete because, without without a visit to a strip bar. And, and a few attractive women running around. So I volunteered to go with location scouting for this movie. I will need to spend several months, I think, in Serbia. How we laughed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're married, by the way, just so you all. Yes, but I, I will leave our marriage, Anna, and trawl the strip bars of Eastern Europe. Just because you're that, you're that courageous. I'm dedicated He's to, that courageous I'm dedicated to his to, art. To the movie. Yeah. Now, you're looking to crowdfund this project. How can people help you out? So people can go to mysonhunter.com, mysonhunter.com and give what they can. I mean, it's it's our own website. We're not giving money away to big tech, to Indiegogo or to Kickstarter for this campaign. And as Phelan said, we've raised over $300,000 in what? Two days. Two, two days. Basically two days. Yeah. So people are responding very well. And we would really, and whatever people can donate, we would be so appreciative at mysonhunter.com. All right, well, we'll tell our viewers to go check that out. You guys were the most entertaining guests I think I've ever interviewed. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you. I really appreciate it, Jessica. Thanks a million. Talk okay. to you the next Thank time. Thank you.